Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we have another episode of Seriously Stupid, where I tell you about a story regarding chlorine and lasers. So you might not be familiar with this, but I've done a lot of sulfur chemistry. Now it turns out that a lot of the time when you're doing reactions with sulfur, sulfur makes insoluble tars. And tars are the bane of our existence as an organic chemist. So there's various strategies that you might employ when you want to remove a tar from a flask or another glass vessel. And so typically the best thing to do is just use an organic solvent, something that'll actually dissolve your compound. If you're not sure what to use, kind of just like try a few things, leave them for half an hour, see what works and what doesn't work. And eventually if you try most of the normal solvents and some other obscure ones, then it's probably time to start trying some more exotic stuff. So one of the things that works really well is chromic acid. However, in most modern labs, we don't use chromic acid because chromium is rather toxic. And once you start mixing it with concentrated acid, it becomes uh, toxic and dangerous. Now, another solution is to use piranha solution. And when piranha doesn't work, you can usually get piranha hot and that will dissolve anything, including flesh, which makes it also very, very dangerous. So like I said, hot piranha, it's, uh, it's like a magic bullet for almost any junk that won't come off of a flask. Now, another strategy you sometimes see for sulfur chemistry is the use of bleach. However, on its own, bleach usually is really slow, and I haven't found it to be that, that effective. If you've found bleach to work in your case, I'd like to know down below. Now, I have a special spicy sauce that I like to use, which is a mixture of sodium hypochlorite and a little bit of nitric acid. However, it's really important to notice here that the bleach is in excess and that you only need a small amount of nitric acid because if you use an excess of nitric acid, you'll convert it entirely into uh, hypochlorous acid and hypochlorous acid is really, really toxic and very volatile. So to minimize that, you use an excess of bleach and you just have a little bit of nitric acid. Now I'm not necessarily claiming that you should use this and I'm not necessarily claiming that it's safe, but I have used it in the past and I found it to be one of the most effective cleaning solutions. So without further ado, let's get started. So the rationale here is you have tar in a flask. Tar is bad. You want a flask without tar because, you know, if you're going to do chemistry in a flask, that better be uh, a tarless flask. And so when I had tried cleaning out a flask in my case, I wasn't able to use any of those other solutions effectively. I tried a lot of solvents. Occasionally, all I would get is a little bit of like white tar as like a crust on my other tar, but it didn't really work. So uh, I thought maybe chlorine would work because chlorine should burn off basically any organic crap by chlorinating it into not tar. And so the, the overall idea here is we take chlorine, we hit it with a UV light to get two chlorine radicals. And essentially what would happen is the tar flask would become the tarless flask. And so this was the goal. So initially we had uh, this flask with some tar and you might be thinking, well, normally tar is black. However, in organic chemistry, you can have tars of every sort of color. I have had a, a rainbow of tars in my time. And this time it happened to be this like kind of ugly looking peach colored tar. And I also had a stir bar in there, a brown stir bar. And that, that stir bar was gonna be uh, seeing some action today. So basically what I did is I first poured in some bleach. And so the, this is just a beaker here, you know, poured in some bleach. And I just thought maybe this would work on its own. So I mixed it around, left it for a few hours. Nothing really happened. As you can see, there is still tar. And so what I decided to do next is add a little bit of hydrochloric acid. And so the rationale here is if you mix bleach and hydrochloric acid, it will make chlorine. And so I got another beaker, put in some concentrated hydrochloric acid and put in some small amount of HCl. And so effectively what happened was uh, we slowly got the generation of chlorine gas. If you did a, an equimolar amount of this, would, this would produce a ton of chlorine right away, which is not what I did. Um, I added you know a small amount of it until I saw some chlorine forming. And I thought it would be smart if I put a stopper in this because I don't want all my chlorine to get out. That chlorine was generated for a purpose and that purpose was to get rid of the tar. So no chlorine is gonna be getting out of this vessel on my watch. Every last molecule of chlorine in there is dedicated to removing the tar. So it is going to do its job or else. And furthermore, it did produce chlorine. And so the whole headspace of the flask was full of a yellow gas. And uh, I was like, great, okay, I got my chlorine. Hopefully the chlorine is working. And around each of the little pieces of tar, I started getting a bit more of a white crust, kind of like I was saying I got with the, the washing with solvents before. But in this case, uh, it was from the chlorine. And I could see a little bit was working, but it was still really slow. And so after a little while, I thought, oh yeah, I have this UV laser with me in the lab. Why don't I try using a UV laser? 
I remember learning in organic chemistry that if you take ultraviolet light and halogens, they'll dissociate into their radical counterpart. And my justification here was, I bet a radical is going to untar tar better than normal chlorine would. So uh, I thought that that might work. So I got my handy dandy UV laser, and it's only a weak laser. Maybe it's like one milliwatt. It's pretty weak. And I started like shooting it at one of the tar spots, but I was trying to get like a little bit of the light onto the chlorine, a little bit onto the tar. And it was bubbling, stuff was happening, so I turned off the laser, and with my gloved hand, I felt where it was, and it was, like, fairly hot. And so I was like, okay, whatever I'm doing is clearly doing something. Heat means chemistry is happening, probably, and so that probably means that I'm getting less tar. And so I thought the next thing to do would just be, uh, you know, put a little bit more light on it. So I uh, shined it a bit more, it fizzed a bit more, and then I turned it off and on, and I did that a few times. But then one time... I decided, okay, you know, I think I think this needs a little bit more laser. I, I think I need to leave it for a while. And so I just, like, shot the laser right at that one spot, uh, held it for a bit, not too much happened. So I moved the laser even closer to the flask. And uh, as I did that, it got, like, bubbling faster and faster and faster and faster until it shush, it, until it got really hot and just blew out the stopper. And it was like, foomp, and it shot and it exploded into a million pieces at the top of my fume hood. And my whole fume hood was covered in shrapnel. And then the chlorine gas started coming out of this. So uh, you could clearly see why this was seriously stupid. You know, I, I've kind of come to realize that most of the dumb stories I have involve closed systems. And I was working on a list of some more and literally all of them involve a closed system. So uh, maybe the, le the lesson here is not to heat a closed system or not to do chemistry that could potentially produce, you know, temperatures or pressures in a closed system. And so if you're wondering how I ended up sorting out the tar, eventually after sitting for long enough, the solution just slowly got chewed away by the mixture of chlorine and bleach and acid. I did end up putting another cover over top of it. However, it was not tightly fixed because uh, we just learned what happened when we do that a few minutes ago. And so uh, slowly over a few more days, I would like agitate the flask, wiggle it around, move the solution around, see if the tar moved at all. And eventually the tar went from like a solid, barely at all moving tar to kind of more like toothpaste, but still tar. And so eventually what happened is I was able to just get like a Kim wipe on the end of a glass stir rod that kind of stuck the, uh, the tar onto the Kim wipe. And then I was able to pull it through the mouth of the flask couple wipes down with some more um, Kim wipes and the whole flask was clean. Now I did still go further and I think I base bath the flask as well and wash with solvents and whatnot to just totally get rid of everything. But yeah, you know, eventually the chlorine did do the job. It just wasn't uh, the way I wanted to. Sometimes faster is not better. Sometimes faster is like faster for your demise. So you got to be a little bit careful with chemistry. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of, of uh, Seriously Stupid. If you like this type of comment, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell. It would really help out the channel if you supported us on Patreon. And I hope you have a great day.